14 differences between Japanese hotels and hotels in the United States of America. I'm Chris, this is Topher. Together we make Yellow Productions. We do travel guides that are fun, informative, and entertaining. And in uh, this video, we're gonna be talking to you about some of our experiences in Japanese hotels versus American hotels. Topher and I, we just got back from three weeks in Kyushu, Japan. Uh, not three weeks, Kyushu, Japan. We just got back from a week in Kyushu, Japan, and uh, thought this would be a pretty interesting topic to talk about. We've been to Japan a number of times. We've probably stayed at 50 different hotels in Japan, and we've stayed thousands of nights in hotels in the U.S., uh, so we have a pretty good frame of reference about Japanese versus American hotels. I'm doing this as a live stream, and uh, so for those of you on the live stream, welcome. Thanks for joining in. Jake, Dave, Brandon, and a Korean name, hello. Uh, and uh, so let me talk a little bit about Japanese hotels in general, and then I will get into the 14 differences. I'm going to go ahead and put that sign right over there that maybe you can see if I scoot over this way and uh, then Topher he's gonna go right there too all right so um, staying at hotels in Japan is a very unique experience uh, from the amazing utilization of space to the wonderful service it is a completely different experience staying in hotels in Japan versus staying at hotels in the US uh, and so in this video, I'm going to compare and contrast the differences between Japanese Western style or business hotels and similar American hotels, business hotels in the U.S. Uh, Japan has lots of types of other hotels, including capsule hotels, manga cafes, uh, hostels, love hotels, which are hotels that you can rent by the hour. You can get overnight buses. And of course, in Japan, there's also traditional ryokans or traditional Japanese hotels, which are often onsens. Uh, so I won't be comparing and contrasting those as much as the Western or business style hotels. I will say though, number 14 in that section, I'm actually going to talk all about the Japanese traditional hotels, the onsens, uh, because in our trip to Kyushu, we just came back from staying at three different onsen hotels, and that's a very interesting experience in and of itself. Uh, so let's uh, let's talk about the first difference between. Um, and Topher needs to come over here a little bit more. Let's talk about the first difference between. Japanese and American hotels, and that is location. Uh, and so in Japan, the basically in like the big cities in Japan, Osaka and Tokyo, the way you pick a good hotel is that its location is closer to a train station. In fact, it's better to be right on top of a train station. For example, Tokyo Station Hotel, it is literally built into the train station that makes it a great location. In most US cities, if you find out that the hotel is next to the train station, you'll be like, I don't want to stay there because typically areas next to train stations are like awful neighborhoods in the US. Uh, in Japan, it's often really good if they're connected to the train station because train stations have many different exits uh, and the hotels in Japan often advertise how many minutes walk they are from the station. So on Japanese hotel websites, you'll see something like this is a one minute walk from Tokyo Station or a five minute walk from this train station. Um, the second difference between Japanese hotels and American hotels, room types. And American hotels typically have like one, maybe two, maybe three room types. Like they'll have a king bed, two beds, and then they'll have like a suite. And, and that's about it at most American hotels. But Japanese hotels have a huge range of different room types. And the room types, they won't just be like three, but a lot of Japanese hotels might have five or ten different room types. Uh, and room types that have like different titles than you might be familiar with. For example, a standard room type they have in Japan is the Hollywood Twin Room. Yes, Hollywood Twin Room. It took me a long time to figure out what a Hollywood Twin Room is, but a twin room would be one that has two beds right next to each other. A Hollywood Twin Room is one that has two beds and they're separate from each other. Uh, of course, they'll have the twin room, they'll have the superior twin room, they'll have the deluxe twin room, uh, and it takes a lot to really figure out what the different room differences are. And frankly, the American, we the English websites of Japanese hotels 
often are of very little help. The other thing, uh, Japanese hotels often have a ton of different packages when you go to the website. And it'll be like meal plans or spa plans, and they'll have things like the pork meal plan or the chicken me meal plan or the beef meal plan. Uh, and again, the English websites or Expedia is usually of no help of deciphering those things. But if you like click the box on a lot of Japanese hotel websites and say, show me all the rooms and plan types, you might get 200 different options for one night at the same hotel. I mean, it's pretty crazy, which is like super different from staying at the Marriott uh, in San Diego, where you've got like one rate to choose from and maybe with like two different packages, like if not very complicated at all, instead of this like crazy different matrix. Uh, one of the things also in Japan is um, I almost never book the cheapest room type. In the US, I almost always book the cheapest room type. Uh, and find that the cheapest rooms are pretty good. In Japan, the, um, well, the cheapest room type is typically gonna be really, really small. And speaking of small, um, the size of Japanese hotel rooms really takes on new meaning. Uh, there was a question um, from Tis My Name uh, who asked, have you ever stayed in a capsule hotel, right? And like capsule hotels, I mean, that's a whole different world. And I personally have never stayed in a capsule hotel because I actually like a hotel room with a door and a bathroom and that sort of stuff. But the capsule hotels, those are designed for people not really to stay when you're there in Japan, but really more for people who have uh, missed the last train before going home because in Japan the trains often don't run at all between midnight and 6 a.m. And so if you miss the train, well, you need a cheap place to stay and these capsules, they're just essentially like a bunk uh, for you to just slide into. Um, there was another hotel that we saw on our trip in Nagasaki and it was a, uh, what did they call it? It was more like a cube hotel. So they were big enough capsules that you could sit up in, but they like the total space you had in the room was like three square meters or something like that. I mean, it was a very minimal amount of space. And when I say, again, Japanese hotels are small, if we look at now not capsule hotels or things like that, but we look at the more traditional business hotels, there's a hotel chain called um, Toyoko Inn, and Toyoko Inn really brings small to new meaning. The first time uh, we stayed at a Toyoko Inn was our first trip to Osaka, and it was a twin room, but its layout was such that when you open the front door, it literally wouldn't open all the way before it hit the bathroom door. And then the beds were on either side of the bathroom. There was literally no space in this hotel room to open a suitcase on the floor. You had to put the suitcase on the bed. There was a desk, but there was no chair for the desk. You had to sit on the bed, basically, to use the desk. And where do you put the suitcase when you're done with it? Well, they had a spot right underneath the uh, bed to put it under there. A lot of Japanese hotel rooms, sometimes they're double rooms, but there's only space on one side of the bed to walk around, so you have to like climb over the other person if you have two people on that single bed. They are crazy, crazy small. Uh, so that's the second difference. Um, the third difference between Japanese and American hotels is about people in the room. So American hotels typically, when you book a hotel, they'll have a drop down box and they'll ask you uh, how many people are in the room. One, two, three, four. Uh, in Japanese hotels, they're often a little different. They'll ask you how many adults, how many children, how many men, how many women. Uh, and some hotels actually have rules about how many men versus how many women can be in a room. Like on Toyoko Inn's website, they have little directions or instructions that say, in a room there can be a man and a woman, two women, but not two men. Uh, and uh, so that's very interesting that they actually ask you the types of adults and their sex when you're checking in. And by the way, when they ask you about how many people, Japanese hotels are actually pretty serious about it. Where American hotels, if you have one and you, you select one and there's two or three, it's usually not a big deal from them. A um, couple comments on YouTube. Tis My Name asked if I've done a video for the Road to Hana in Maui. I have not done a video for the Road to Hana. I only made it about halfway on the Road to Hana before I got sick. Uh, but I do have another, a uh, lot of other Maui videos, but not that one. So Cal Seth is joining us from the island of Oahu. He says, aloha from Koalina. Aloha, So Cal Seth. 360 React joins, says, hey guys. And uh, So Cal Seth says, a knock and a scratch from Koalina. Knock and a scratch. 
Uh, I'm gonna drink here before I go on to number four. All right. <clears throat> Okay, so the fourth difference about Japanese versus American hotels, and I'm kind of doing this in order now about like arriving to a hotel, then I'm gonna talk about when you're in the hotel, and I'll talk about the checkout experience. So number four is about arriving at a hotel. Um, and I would say arriving at an American hotel is pretty much a non-event. Like you arrive and you walk up to the front desk. I mean, there might be valet parking in an American hotel. There might be self-parking. They see you. They maybe direct you to the front desk. They maybe offer to take your bags. Uh, but in Japan, it's a whole different thing. Like, when they offer to take your bags, it's often not an offer. They really want to take your bags. Like, they will nearly fight with you to take your bags. And um, so uh, an example I'll give you is I was at the Marriott in... Osaka just recently and uh, some of you who follow me on Facebook uh, might have seen the pictures that I posted from the Marriott in Osaka and so it's an American hotel in Japan and so getting up to the lobby as soon as I get out of the elevator you have to go up to like the 17th or 19th floor you come out of the elevators they've got someone posted to watch the elevators come out of the elevator someone sees me and they start walking to me to be like, sir, are you checking in? I'm like, yes, I'm here checking in. They're like, okay, check in is over there. But they don't just point me in that direction. They walk with me to that direct. They walk to make, make sure I don't get lost. I mean, I can see it, but they want to make sure I don't get lost. And then I get by the bell desk and they hand me off to one of the bell people who then say, can I take your luggage? And, you know, at Marriott's, I'm kind of like, nah, it's okay. I, I mean, I, I got it. He's like, really? I'm like, yeah, I got it. He's like, okay, I'll walk you to the check-in counter. So now he walks me to the check-in counter, which again, I can see, but he wants to make sure I don't get lost. Um, there's no line, but I have to, I have to wait. It's busy. All, all the things are taken. And so uh, the one person in line, I now this bellboy, he's still standing there. He's like, are you, are you sure I can't take your bags? I'm like, no, no, it's okay. He's like, okay, well, hey, I'm really, really sorry you have to wait. Um, I'll, I'll be happy to take your bags. I mean, it was like every 20 seconds. It was like, I'll be happy to take your bags. I'll be happy to take your bags. Finally, I'm like, fine, you, you, you can take my bags, take my bags, go ahead. And they're very happy to take your bags. Um, and uh, so really service takes on a whole new level in Japanese hotels. And they do the service and they don't expect any tips either. Like that's one of the amazing nice things about it is in American hotels, if they're offering to take your bags or valet park your car, it's often only because there's gonna be a few dollars that they expect uh, placed in their hand. Um, all right, the fifth thing that's different about American versus Japanese hotels is parking. So this is in the arriving in a hotel, uh, and I talked about it. So an American hotel, when you go to American hotels in almost any city or any place, you expect parking. And if there's not a parking lot on premise, there will be valet parking in front. Uh, and those are basically the two types of parking. There's either a parking lot, a parking garage, or valet parking in front of the hotel. Those are your three options in American hotels. Pretty simple. Uh, in Japanese hotels, it's different. In Japanese hotels, don't expect parking. Parking is really more of a optional, additional, great thing that a hotel might have, but that's not considered a standard that all hotels have. Also, parking um, may be like five blocks away. Uh, when we were staying in Nagasaki on this trip, um, the hotel on their website, they say they don't have any parking, but they've contracted with the parking garage that's like five blocks away. If you park there and then walk to the hotel, the hotel will like validate your parking and then it's only a thousand yen or like ten dollars for the nightly stay. Um, some of the interesting kind of parking experience also have been um, in... Some cities that is really dense, and Tokyo is a great example, sometimes the parking will be like a parking um, Ferris wheel, where like they'll have this one tall building that has no windows, and you basically pull the car into like a Ferris wheel type car for your car. After you pulled it in there, you get out, and then your car basically gets sent up this thing in it. Uh, and obviously I've never ridden inside this Ferris wheel for cars, uh, but that's a very uh, different way for parking as well. Um, comment, Brandon Torres said uh, that uh, he thought I had a cool Yellow Productions cup. It was part of my new Yellow Productions swag that I got recently, including the pillow over there, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Mm. Kirk uh, says, what's up, my ninja? What up, Kirk? 
Uh, speaking of ninjas, when I was in um, Osaka, there was this really great ninja supply store. If you follow me on Facebook, you all saw the picture of uh, the ninja supply store, which was just neat. Um, SoCal Seth comments that there's rarely parking, especially in Tokyo. That is very true. Kirk asks, uh, what did you do for the Japanese camera crew? What were you talking about and what did they ask you? Kirk, that's a great question. Uh, and if you follow my Facebook page, I, I'm, I know I'm plugging this a lot and I'm not intending to do it as a complete shameless advertisement, but I put a link over there to the actual video um, that aired on Japanese television. And uh, the video basically, um, and so for those of you who didn't see my post earlier, when I was in Kyushu in Fukuoka at this temple, I got approached by a Japanese television station. And the Japanese television station um, asked if they could ask me some questions. They said they're doing um, kind of like a video or segment on um, how foreigners find things in Japan, how they find, um, if they're trying to speak in English, how they find the communication from the local Japanese, uh, and they want my opinions about it. So I answered a few questions, and then they were like, hey, that's cool. Hey, can we, um, can we maybe follow you around for a while? We'll just, just do your thing like you're at the temple, and uh, like, just, we're not even here. We're just back here. And it's like, well, I kind of, I mean, you know, Topher and I, we already kind of draw a lot of attention because we have our own camera. It may be smaller than theirs, but then when we're followed by a big camera and a boom microphone, I mean, it's a whole different set of things. Uh, and so we'd go do things, and like, uh, there's this, um, there's a segment in the, uh, the shrine video that I do where I'm like talking about this um, metal bowl that people go to um, pet to get their wishes uh, for... Um, like exams, things like that, granted. But as I'm like talking about that, like, what is that? Then the Japanese TV crew would come up and be like, why don't you go ask somebody in line what it is? Uh, and to see what our interactions were. And then the video that they put together was almost like a, sort of like an English lesson for Japanese to say like, oh, these are ways to th say things like, it's for good luck or it's for our wishes to come true. Uh, and so it was actually kind of a neat segment. Uh, I think I was sort of their um, feature character in the little five minute segment. Uh, so it was, uh, it was fun times. Um, all right, uh, Jose asked, how is Topher? Topher's really great. I mean, he always enjoys his trips to Japan, though he's, he's tired from a week and a half of intense video shooting. I mean, that's a lot of screen time for Topher and he has a little bit of energy because he's small. Uh, David M says, it's really in and out Coke. Uh, no, actually, actually this cup mm, is in and out iced tea, but not, uh, not a yellow cup. Um, all right. Uh, and Brandon says he loved the latest Japan videos. Excellent, Brandon. More Japan videos coming out. Uh, the next series that's coming up, though, are my kawaii videos. Those are going to be coming out uh, for the next few weeks, so stay tuned. All right. Let's go on to number six. The sixth difference between Japanese and American hotels is... Um, the check-in experience. So, in American hotels, they try to make check-in as quick and short as possible. So you spend as little time in pos as little time at the front desk as possible. I mean, like Marriott and things like that. They've enabled like mobile check-in, so you can check in on your phone, bypass the desk. Hilton has these like mobile room keys where you can check in, use your phone as your room key. Yeah, not in Japan. And not in Japan for the American chains. Uh, when you check in, it's a very thorough experience. You go up to the front desk, and as a foreigner, you always show your passport, and they always have you fill out this, like, hotel guest information card. I mean, they already have the information, and it's like this super formality thing, but they give this to you and say, hey, fill this out, please write your name down, these sorts of things. I mean, Marriott's done away with that a long time ago, but not Marriott in Japan. They like you to fill out that information card. Uh, and then they typically do a whole thing at check-in about explaining the hotel to you, like a long explanation. Uh, and then if you've got like breakfast, then they're gonna give you breakfast coupons. Uh, and I'll talk more about that. I got a whole section on breakfast, but the breakfast coupons, very important, and they like their coupons. And they're always handwritten. They handwrite it. If they don't handwrite it out, they have a stamp. They like stamps. They stamp it with a date and number of people, and then you better have that coupon when you go to breakfast the next day. Otherwise, you're gonna be hungry. 
Uh, and then, once you're done with check-in, there will typically be someone who will show you to your room in the more high-end Japanese hotels. And they're going to take you to your room. Sometimes at some hotels, like the Tokyo Station Hotel, I had two people take me to my room because they really wanted to make sure I didn't get lost. And I don't know, thought I was incompetent. You know, they're like, if, if I didn't have two people, I'd get lost someplace along the way or get eaten by a lion. They'll take you to your room. They'll typically explain the room to you, bring your stuff there, set it up. And, and again, don't, don't ask for any tips. It's amazing. Um, on Facebook, a uh, comment from Claire Lowe. Uh, Claire says, I'm going to Osaka Aquarium because I saw your post. Could you talk about the aquarium more? Claire, the aquarium was amazing. Uh, but one of the best aquariums I've ever been to. Um, the interesting thing about the aquarium in Osaka, it is, a, it's like a one kilometer long aquarium. And so they have these like markers on the floor that tell you exactly how long it is to go through the aquarium because it's so big. Uh, the biggest thing I'd say if you're going to the Osaka Aquarium, get there in the morning. It gets really busy later in the day. And if you get there in the morning, like 10.30 a.m., that's 11 a.m., that's a great time to see all the different feedings. So when you come in the door, they'll have a feeding schedule like in the otter land. So look at the feeding schedule, maybe take a picture of it, and then try to hit up the different exhibits when they have their feeding times. So you'll definitely enjoy it most. And uh, thumbs up for that post. Um, Kirk asked, how full filled out is your passport? It's pretty full, Kirk, uh, but, you know, I haven't had to get the uh, the extra pages or anything yet, so that's positive. Uh, and SoCal Stats comments says, Japanese attention to detail is something else, isn't it? You're right, it is something else. Japanese attention to detail is truly amazing. All right, so let's go on to number seven, the seventh difference between American and Japanese hotels is now the room itself. So we're going to talk about things in the room that are different in this section. Maybe there's a lot of differences in this section, but I just compiled it into one. And so the first thing, I already mentioned this, Japanese rooms are small. And by small, I mean really small. Did I mention small? Small, 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 small. Tiny. Um, so something else that's in the room, the mattress. I find the mattress in Japanese hotels often much firmer than American hotels. American hotels often try to make it like soft and pillow tops, things like that. Not Japanese hotels. They like it a little on the hard side. And if you go to a traditional Japanese hotel, you won't have a mattress at all. You'll have a futon. Uh, and the futon is on a satami mat. They lay it out. You get a cover for it. And I'll talk more about that in the uh, onsen experience. Um, so in addition to mattresses being on the firm side, well, what's on the What's on the bed? Well, the other thing on the bed is a pillow. And there will typically be one pillow on the bed, not the whole American style, like 18 pillows. I mean, American hotels have gone really overboard on pillows. Like American hotels look um, look kind of like, um, but like this spec here, like lots of pillows to the point that the first thing I do when I go to an American hotel is take pillows off the bed. Because I'm like, I don't know who can sleep on these beds with this many pillows. So in Japan, they've gone the other way, one pillow, and it's often filled with beans. Yes, beans. Not not feathers, not down, beans. Uh, maybe beans on the bottom and foam or feathers on the top, um, but it helps with the humidity. So one of the things I almost always have to do at Japanese hotels is ask for another pillow because I like to sleep on two pillows. Uh, sometimes I have to try to find one that isn't full of beans because I don't find the beans to be super comfy. Um, the bathrooms, the bathrooms are different in Japanese hotels. Uh, so they, in Japanese hotels, typically have um, smart toilets, like the Toto toilets, like the washlets. I mean, they are the most amazing toilets ever. The ones that, if you're a woman, will wash your front. If you're a man, they'll wash your back. I mean, I guess I'll do that there, woman, too. Typically, the seats are heated. They might often have music. Uh, they have, like, a dryer. Um, they'll have like automated that the lid opens and automated that the lid closes. They'll be like illuminated so that if you come in at night, it'll light up the toilet. Uh, I mean, their toilets are amazing. Toilets in American hotels, they flush. I mean, that's about as much as I can say about American hotel toilets. In Japanese bathrooms, uh, they also have a wide variety of bathroom amenities. So you'll go in and there will be a toothbrush, a comb, a razor, toothpaste, q-tips, a shower cap, hair bands. I mean, there's often a very elaborate selection of bathroom amenities. So if you forgot anything or didn't even bring any toiletries, you're typically okay in Japanese hotels. Most American hotels don't go much beyond um, soap, shampoo, and conditioner. Uh, and some American hotels will have those extra things, but you often have to ask for them. 
And uh, then if you do ask for them, then you're lucky if they don't like try to charge you $3. I mean, only if you're in the really high-end hotels like Park Hyatt's and JW Marriott's will you find that stuff as standard. Um, Japanese bathrooms will also typically have a handheld shower almost always. They like handheld showers. Often we'll have a stool in the shower too because Japanese like to sit when they take a shower and sometimes with a bucket so they can fill up the bucket and then wash their hair with the bucket. Um, many bathrooms also in the more traditional hotels will have toilet slippers. They will have a separate set of slippers just for you to wear when you go in the toilet so that you don't dirty your feet with the toilet floor and then you don't take the dirty toilet floor into the rest of the room. Like those slippers are just meant to wear in the toilet. That's why they're called toilet slippers. Uh, the bathtubs in Japanese bathrooms will typically be very deep. Uh, and that's one of the things I hate about American hotels, especially someone who's six feet tall. If I do want to take a bath, I never fit in those tubs. They're always too small, you know, and I can get water up to like here or something like that, right? And then like my knees come out because the thing's too small. Um, Japanese really like to soak like up to here. And so I'll, the bathtubs will generally be big enough that I can soak in them. And that's pretty impressive. Um, the Osaka Marriott actually had a really neat feature in the bathtub that it had a timer. You could push the button, it was a 10 minute timer, and it would fill the tub with the 10 minute timer so that you didn't have to like constantly wonder if the tub was full or gonna overflow. Uh, and then bathrooms in Japan are often modular. And by modular, I mean plastic. Uh, and so you know, typically in a lot of Japanese hotels, to get into the bathroom, you'll step up because the bathroom is something they almost just lift into the room. Uh, and like in the hallways, you can notice that they'll have like the main door into the room and then they'll have separate doors like into the bathroom. I mean, not a door that you'd walk through, but doors when they want to undo the modular bathroom and replace it with another one, they can do it from the hotel hallway because that's one of the things that has to be replaced most. You often don't see tile work in Japanese hotel bathrooms because it's often these modular plastic bathrooms. Um, Kirk asked if I've ever stayed in a capsule hotel. I have not stayed in a capsule hotel. Uh, maybe something for the future. Um, Jose asked, what's my opinion on squat toilets? Uh, my personal opinion on squat toilets is I have not really built up the leg muscles to do squat toilets all that much. Like people in Asia that are used to squatting, I would say generally like squat toilets better. They find them more hygienic and prefer them when they're there. Uh, but that's not my preference just because I think I've grown up with the Western toilets. I really do like the smart Toto toilets and uh, I do like the wash feature. I have to say it is kind of nice. Uh, and uh, Kirk asks, what power setting do you like the jet of water squirting your behind at? Uh, I, I guess medium one or whatever the default is. I don't really, I don't really get into like the crazy like high pressure or like massage. I mean, that's that's a whole nother level that I'd probably have to be in Japan for a lot longer. Coco asks, are you living in Japan or how often do you visit? I do not live in Japan. I live in sunny Southern California. Uh, we probably visit Japan about once a year. Um, so we go, I'd say fairly often. Uh, so Cal Seth's comments, only short women can handle that many pillows. Yeah, that's right. All those pillows on a bed in American hotel, if you're short, it is not a big deal. Um, and, uh, Jake asked, do they allow smoking in Japanese hotels? That's a great question. And I will say many Japanese hotels, they do allow smoking. It's an excellent question to ask uh, and something that I didn't have in the list. Um, and yes, they do still have smoking rooms there. And so if non-smoking is important to you, then you should make sure you book that and you should make sure it's confirmed. Otherwise you're gonna be in kind of a smelly, stinky room. I mean, places like Marriott and this and that often have the same kind of American no smoking policy throughout the hotel, but that is really not to be said for all Japanese hotels. Um, Vapen Jason asks, how are you able to travel so much? That's a great question. Probably a subject for another live stream, but uh, I enjoy traveling. I probably take a couple big trips a year, a couple small trips a year, and then uh, I just shoot a lot of video when I'm on these trips. And so uh, that stretches out over the years. Like for example, on this trip to Kyushu, I shot uh, in the week and a half over eight hours of video or something crazy like that. So a lot of videos coming out from that eight hours. Uh, Colleen Christian Davis, on Facebook says, um, Hawaii videos, please. Colleen, excellent. This Friday, um, Kauai travel guide coming out. And then the next 
four Fridays after that will all be Kawaii videos. So I've got them all edited and they're just queued up to come out uh, every Friday. Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific time, by the way, if anybody wonders exactly what time I typically upload the videos, Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific time. SoCal Seth asks, any trips to Oahu coming up? Uh, none at the moment, but uh, that is often a place that we like to go to. So uh, I look forward to more more cheap eats out in Oahu. Um, other differences in the room, so we're, we're for those who just tuned in, we're on number seven, which is differences between the rooms themselves in American versus Japanese hotels. Uh, and uh, pajamas, pajamas is a difference. Uh, American hotels typically have a robe that they give you in a room, maybe, and you kind of wonder like if that robe's been worn by other people or when that robe has been washed. Uh, and then they often have like a sign in the robe that says like, like if you take the robe, they'll charge you $75. Uh, but in Japan, they often always have pajamas. Uh, and by pajamas, typically like a pajama shirt and a pajama pants if you're in a Western hotel. At the Osaka Marriott, for those who follow me on Facebook, you'll see that I posted a picture of me wearing the Osaka Marriott pajamas, pretty fancy. Uh, if you are staying in a more traditional hotel, they may often have a yukata. And a yukata is sort of like an informal kibono. Um, and then if you're staying at a traditional Japanese hotel in the winter when it's really cold, then they may have a combination of both, where they may give you pajamas, pants, shirt, and then a kimono, to put, like a yukata to put on top of that, and then a jacket to put on top of that. But a lot of hotels provide you these clothes, then they basically expect you to like <clears throat> wear them when you're in the hotel. Uh, and they're clean too, right? That's another thing. And like if you wear them one night, they'll take them back and launder them and give you clean ones for the next day. Um, so you don't really have to wonder whether they're clean or not. Also, the Japanese like tea. And uh, so there will always be a tea kettle in the room. An electric tea kettle, not one you put on the stove, but one you plug in <clears throat> and it makes hot water. The nicer hotels will fill that tea kettle up for you so it's already got water in it. Um, often Japanese hotels will have an air purifier or a humidifier in the room. You rarely see that in American hotels, though I did recently see that when I was staying in Arlington, Virginia uh, at the Crystal City Marriott. They had like a hypoallergenic room that had air purifiers in it. Um, Japanese hotels will often have a pants press. You know, American hotels often have an iron and an ironing board. Japanese hotels will have that too, but in addition, a pants press, like a big pants press, like on the wall. You turn it on, you put your pants in it, you press it, and you get your pants perfectly pressed. So if you like perfectly pressed pants, you will love Japanese hotels that have pants presses and ch -ch -ch fabric freshener in the closets, um, which is interesting. Uh, so a couple questions, and I'll move on to number eight. Um, David M. says, love Kauai, looking forward to it. Excellent. Uh, SoCal Seth says, I love Puka Dog in Kauai. Well, SoCal Seth, in my Best Cheap Eats video in Kauai, Puka Dog is number three, number four. I don't know. It is in there, though. Uh, they were good hot dogs. A little expensive, though, which it's in my Cheap Eats video, but then right next to it's Costco, so I kind of try to counterbalance that a little bit. Uh, Kirk asked, did you purchase anything from a vending machine when you were there? I purchased a lot of drinks from vending machines and a lot of tickets for ramen. Like I went to a lot of restaurants where the way you order food is at a vending machine and then you present them the ticket. Uh, I didn't get anything like weird from vending machines like, you know, underwear or things like that. I mean, I know there are a lot of those weird vending machines. Kyushu, mostly drink vending machines is what you see. Uh, Claire Lowe asked, is it safe to drive in the snow in Japan? Um, so that's a great question. And for those of you, again, who followed my pictures, you'll know that in Kyushu, it was like negative five degrees Celsius and snowing. Uh, and so actually one of the hotels before we checked in uh, called us up and said, hey, how are you going to the hotel? Are you driving? Are you taking the train? Um, we said we were driving, and then they said, hey, you should contact the rental car company and get snow tires. Uh, and so as a, an American who rents a lot of American rental cars, I didn't even know that's an option. I mean, frankly, if I tried to call up Hertz rental car here and say I'd like snow tires, they'd be like, you're lucky we give you tires with any air in them. I mean, what are you talking about snow tires? But um, Toyota rental car in Japan, actually for an extra 10 or $15 a day, will put snow tires on the car. You can also rent snow chains 
uh, from the rental car companies. Uh, and so with the snow tires, we found it pretty good. The roads were pretty well plowed. Uh, I mean, you know, there was, I mean, it, it's snow, so, you know, it's not like the easiest place to drive, but we didn't, we didn't find anything like super treacherous. Um, in comparison, uh, we have a video on like driving in the snow in Lake Tahoe, uh, with chains. And that was, that was pretty sketchy. Um, so we didn't find it nearly as sketchy as in Japan. We found the roads more well maintained, uh, than there. Um, so Cal Seth comments and he's in Hawaii right now. He says it's nine bucks for a gallon of milk here in Hawaii. That is really expensive for a gallon of milk in Hawaii. Uh, but Hawaii, everything's expensive. Josh asks if I've ever been to London. Yes, I've been to London a couple times. Um, but I think I was in London probably really before I started doing YouTubing. So I don't think I have any great videos on, uh, London. Uh, Ivana asks, hello, don't know if you've answered this yet. But have you been in those small capsule hotels? How was it? Uh, Ivana, I, I, you know, it is the third time I've been asked that question. It's a great question. I have not been in a capsule hotel, but I feel like, you know, next time I go back to Japan, I almost have to go in a capsule hotel just so I can tell you all how it is. Uh, Coco asks, do you get a rail pass when you go to Japan? This time we did not get a rail pass. Um, we flew into Fukuoka and then we drove around Kyushu. So we rented a car. Um, if we're going long distances, say like Tokyo to Osaka, then we'll get a JR pass, particularly if we're going round trip. Uh, but if we're just staying in one area, renting a car, then we typically don't get the JR pass. By the way, when there's JR passes, there's like the big countrywide one, and then there's often regional ones. So sometimes we'll get the regional rail passes. They'll be cheaper and maybe a better deal. Um, Colleen asks uh, about Hawaii. Do you like Kauai better than Maui? Hmm. Um... I like Oahu the best of the three islands of Oahu, Kauai, and Maui because I like the food. I'm kind of a foodie, and I guess I'm more of a city person. And I think I liked Maui better than Kauai because uh, Maui has better beaches than Kauai. Kauai had really good um, like hiking and nature, but I was sort of disappointed by the beaches in Kauai. I mean, I still liked it, don't get me wrong, uh, but the beaches in Kauai were not as nice as they are in Maui. Um, Kirk, uh, says, have you been to Disneyland, Japan? I have Disneyland, Tokyo Disneyland, and Tokyo Disney Sea. If you want to see all about it, I have two videos about that subject. I uh, just type in, uh, Tokyo Disneyland Yellow Productions. You should find it. It's also in my Japan travel guide playlist. Uh, Vape and Jason asks, have I been to China? I have been to China. I've got, uh, five or six videos on Beijing, including a Beijing travel guide, visit to the Great Wall, um, I've also been to Hong Kong, Macau, uh, and Taiwan. Uh, Landscaper Ben says he's listening to me as I drive. Ben, that's excellent. Drive safe, please. Uh, and uh, last question, and then I'm going to go to number eight. I don't mean last question like ever. I mean, keep asking the question. just last question until I move on to the next one. Claire Lowe asks if there's any rude Japanese. They are always so polite. Uh, and I'm going to answer this in two ways. Um, is that... Uh, the Japanese are typically very nice. They are very nice, except in the subway or on the train when it's busy. When they're on the subway or on the train and they're packing into it, uh, it's like every every man and woman for themselves. I mean, they just like push in there and they don't care who you are or what you are. They are getting in there. Uh, so I would say in that tense, I mean, they'll be polite and they'll like they'll line up and they'll wait, but and they'll wait for people to get out. But then as soon as everybody got out, they're like, okay, here we go. Um, and that's probably just a product of, of how busy it is. All right. The eighth thing that is different between American and Japanese hotels is breakfast. Breakfast, yes, breakfast. Uh, I don't know if all of you like breakfast in hotels, but I like breakfast in hotels. I'm big on hotel breakfasts. In Japanese hotels, they will typically have a Japanese and a Western style breakfast. The Japanese breakfast is usually a set meal. When you go into the Japanese breakfast restaurant, you will get one, you will get like one option, which might be like, do you want rice or do you want kanji or like a rice porridge? Uh, and then it'll typically come with like 10 or 15 different plates of food, like little plates. The Japanese love little plates. Like it's a set meal that they kind of bring and set down. So everything on a tray, uh, maybe the lower end Japanese breakfast, the higher end Japanese breakfast, they'll individually put all those little um, plates on your table for you. Um, and the Japanese breakfast, 
is typically the Japanese restaurant would, you know, have like, it'd be a little more formal, like formal Japanese, quiet, reserved. The waitresses might wear kimonos. Um, the There might be like some garden scenery in it. There might be some tranquil music playing in the background. Uh, the Western style breakfast in Japan uh, will typically be a buffet. Uh, and they call it a Western style breakfast, but, um, I mean, it's not like a full British breakfast or American pancakes. I mean, they have their whole own rendition on it. Like if you get bacon in Japan, like if you like bacon, and I mean like American bacon, which is like cooked in Japan, bacon is really on the light side. Uh, and, um, so their eggs are also really kind of on the light or runny side. Uh, when they make omelet, it's a Japanese style omelet. Um, it's kind of hard to explain. You just have to get the Japanese style omelet. Um, <clears throat> but I will say that if you're in Japan, the Japanese chains, uh, like Hotel Nikko, for example, or the JR hotels, typically have a more elaborate breakfast per price than Western hotels and like if you're staying at say a $200 a night hotel at a Japanese chain versus $200 a night hotel at an American chain like the Hyatt um, The Japanese chain will have a better more elaborate breakfast per hotel value than you get at American hotels I mean American hotels I feel are pretty lame on breakfast like Boy, the residence in breakfast, I can't tell you how many times I've had the really bad oatmeal and the really bad cantaloupe Spring Hill Sweets or Fairfield Inn that has like, uh, I don't know, microwaved oatmeal. I mean, you know, it's a free breakfast, but it's, it's a really weak breakfast. Uh, and also I feel like a lot of American hotels, um, specifically in that sort of residence in Hampton Suites category, like their breakfast all the same. You've been to one U.S. business hotel breakfast, you've been to all of them. But Japanese hotels really try to have different breakfasts and varied breakfasts and interesting items on their breakfast, particularly from the region. So when we were staying in Kyushu, like in the Mount Aso area, um, the hotels would have rice from Kyushu and they would have milk from Kyushu. Uh, to sort of say like, hey, eat breakfast here because it's going to be special. Um, also, some of these hotels would have like spicy cod roe, like uh, cod eggs. I mean, it's expensive and it's on a breakfast that mm, in a hotel that we paid $80 a night for. That was the room and breakfast included. I mean, it was a really good breakfast in an $80 a night room. So if you're in Japan, uh, definitely eat the breakfast at the hotels. Um, and I, I generally like the Western breakfast more than the Japanese style breakfast because I like the buffet and they're usually a little less stuffy. Japanese hotels often have ice cream for breakfast. Yes, ice cream. I scream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's funny. I find it funny to have um, ice cream for breakfast. But when I see it, I get it. Uh, and I talked about the breakfast coupon. Uh, they're really big on their breakfast coupons. American hotels, Typically, if you have breakfast in your room package, uh, when you go to the restaurant, you will say, um, like, your room number. You say, like, let's say, what's your room number? You say, it's a 722, my last name is Rainy, and uh, then they'll be like, oh, yeah, we have, we have your breakfast on file. Not in Japanese hotels, that coupon. Uh, and then each one for a different day. Uh, and some hotels, they'll issue you all the breakfast coupons at once when you check in. Other hotels, expect when you leave the hotel that you leave your room key at the front desk. And then when you come back in the evening, then when you get your room key back, then they give you the breakfast coupon for the next day. And it's almost like an extortion to be like, well, that's the way we're gonna make sure you give us your room key, uh, is that we're gonna ration the breakfast coupons when you get them back. So why do you have to give your hotel key to some hotel desks? That's the way they know you're not there and that's the way they know it's time to clean your room. Um, on the rude Japanese question, OC Girl adds and says, Japanese don't like crying babies, uh, OC Girl has heard. And uh, yeah, we heard we heard from some friends that brought babies to Japan that they got a lot of um, maybe not so nice looks around crying babies. And actually, that's one thing that we've sort of observed being around Japan. You don't, while, while there, there must be little kids, like you actually don't see a lot of little kids out and about in society. It's like they, keep them hidden away someplace until they're old enough to like not cry. I don't know. Mm -hmm. 
landscaper Ben, who's watching while he's driving, says, I have bad lag. <clears throat> you know, it's understandable since uh, you're halfway around the world in Australia and driving. So the fact that, I mean, you can hear me at all and see this is a um, modern amazement, I think. Uh, Tanner Wilson says, did you get to see any of the Tokyo 2020 Olympic venues getting built and prepared? Uh, we didn't make it to Tokyo on this trip, so no, unfortunately, we didn't get to see any of those. Though, at a lot of the souvenir stores, uh, they already had, like, Tokyo, Tokyo 2020 Olympic souvenirs, memorabilia, which is pretty impressive to, like, want to buy Tokyo souvenirs, um, boy, like, two years ahead of the Olympics. I mean, that's, that's really getting ahead of it. Brandon Torres says, ice cream for breakfast, that sounds great. It is great. Uh, Jose Martin says, as an American, what was the biggest culture shock for you in Japan? Um, I'd probably say one of the biggest culture shocks, and, and, and maybe it isn't a culture shock, but it's a, it's a difficulty for me is, um, like if I'm talking to somebody, like moderating my voice to be a little more quiet. Uh, I naturally kind of have a loud voice, um, you know, on the trains and things like that, and I just like... To learn that in Japan, a lot of times, uh, you're just supposed to be quiet. We're on the train now. We all be quiet. We don't talk when we're on the train. Like, you go to New York City or Washington, D.C., Chicago, people are on the subway, they're talking, they're lively. In Japan, people are on the subway, and they're quiet. Very quiet. Very quiet. Uh, and so I'm not, I'm not naturally quiet when I'm around people that I know. Uh, I find that awkward for a while. But now I've, I've kind of gotten used to it, because that's, that's sort of what we do. Um, Landscaper Ben asks if I liked Beppu. Uh, we were in Beppu for about two hours, uh, uh, maybe four hours. We had lunch, and then we went to see the Sea Hell. Uh, and actually, I really did enjoy the Sea Hell. It had, like, all this, um, steam, and it was loud and volcanic, and we got some pudding. Uh, I mean, there was, this, like, yeah, I mean, you know, certainly manufactured because we paid admission to go in there. Um, but for the, for the four hours we were there, I think, I think Beppu was pretty fun. And I'm glad we made it there. Uh, we did not make it to the... There's seven of these hells, seven of these onsen hot springs you can visit. We only went to one. We didn't go to the other six. Ben, how many uh, did you go to? Did you go to more than the one hell? Did you go to all seven? Jimmy Thompson says, Japan is on my bucket list. I'm going to Vegas next week and can't wait to try the Shake Shack. Thanks for the awesome video. Jimmy, uh, thank you. I'm glad you loved it and you weren't one of the haters that told me that my Cheap Eats video, that they weren't cheap and they were too expensive. Uh, so thank you for loving it and thanks for the positive feedback. I hope you enjoy Shake Shack and some other Cheap Eats in there and enjoy Vegas. Uh, Jimmy Thompson says, Japanese women are always so happy. Yeah, I feel like if they're in the stores or things like that, they're like trained to be happy, like they're trained to sound happy. Uh, that's just part of the part of the customer service. Uh, Coco says, I hear you're not supposed to eat and drink on the trains, but they sell Eki Ben at the stations. So the trains you would eat on are the ones that have like seats and tables that come down. And there's a lot of, like the Shinkansen, which is the bullet train, totally okay to eat on the bullet train. The ones that you wouldn't eat on are like the local trains that have like, you know, everybody's like holding on and the seats are not like, you know, in rows facing forward, but they're like a bench seat along the side. You wouldn't eat on a train like that. Another interesting culture thing in Japan, uh, they do not walk and eat at the same time. So there's kind of like a Japanese, um, well, what's the word? Etiquette, aesthetic, uh, cultural thing, uh, about like one thing at a time. So you either walk or you eat uh, or you drink. And so you'll see a lot of people in Japan, when they go to a vending machine, if they're thirsty, they'll go to the vending machine, they'll put the money in, they'll get a drink, they will stand at the vending machine, drink the entire drink, throw the drink away, and then continue to walk. Or the same thing as 7-Eleven, they'll go to 7-Eleven, they'll buy maybe like a nikuman, which is a pork bun, uh, they'll stand outside 7-Eleven, eat the pork bun, once they've eaten it, they'll throw it away, and then they'll go on. They will not walk and eat it. That's the best way you can tell a foreigner in Japan is someone who is walking and eating. Okay, the ninth thing that's a difference between American and Japanese hotels is room service. So we're talking about food, uh, and uh, a lot of American hotels offer room service. Many Americans expect room service when they go to an American hotel. Japanese hotels, room service is usually not an option, like at all. Even at really nice Japanese hotels, they often do not have room service. But... 
in-room massage service, that often is an option. I've been to a lot of Japanese hotels, including the Osaka Marriott, where they've had information about if you want to get a massage in-room, call this number. The tenth difference between Japanese and American hotels is hotel bars. American hotels typically have a bar. Even low-end hotels, like I was in a Hilton Garden Inn in New Jersey, and they had a hotel bar uh, with like nobody sitting at it. And then when there were people sitting at it, there's like three people sitting at this really sad hotel bar. Um, but almost every American hotel <coughs> has a hotel bar. Uh, Japanese hotels typically do not have a hotel bar. They may have a hotel bar, but only if they cater to Westerners. For Japanese, they would prefer a beer vending machine. Yes, we talked about vending machines and uh, traditional Japanese would check into a hotel, go to the vending machine, buy their beer, and drink it in their room. The 11th difference between Japanese and American hotels is the gym. Gym, what's that? What's a gym? Uh, only if they cater to Westerners. Typical Japanese hotels will not have a gym. Most American hotels will have a gym, even if it's like the world's smallest, tiniest gym, they will have one so that they can say it's a gym. Even if it's like a broom closet that they've put a treadmill in, they'll say they have a gym. Um, the Japanese hotels I've been to that do have gyms, like the Marriott's and the Hyatt's and those sorts of things, a lot of times they make you sign a waiver when you go in. In the Osaka Marriott, you have to sign a waiver and drop it in the box before you go into the gym. Uh, so that was interesting. The twelfth difference is uh, swimming pools. Japanese hotels typically don't have swimming pools. And hotels that are like onsens, the hot springs, little big signs that say these hot springs are not for swimming. But for the hotels that do have swimming pools, and this applies to Japanese chains and American chains there, so Hyatt in Japan, this applies uh, if you go to the pool, you will wear a swim cap. Yes, a swim cap, like the Olympic people do. And you will wear goggles. And if you don't have them, they will give them to you. That is right. All right, go to a couple comments. Um, Landscaper Ben says, I am bloody loud. You're right, I am bloody loud. I should be quiet a little more. Kirk asks, is there a red light district in Japan like there is in Amsterdam? Kirk, yes, there are many red light districts in many cities throughout Japan. Uh, though prostitution is not legal in Japan, um, though a lot of services just less than that are. Uh, Jose uh, says, tough question. What is your favorite anime on television? Um, I think one of my favorites is Ranma. Ranma, one half, because there's a panda in it. Uh, I also really like Cowboy Bebop. Um, a couple other animes that I can't can't think of off the top of my head right now, too. Uh, Kirk asks, did you see any homeless while you were in Japan? Not on this trip in Kyushu. It's more rural. Um, so there weren't many homeless there. If you go to Tokyo, and we've been to Tokyo, we see a lot of homeless. And they may not be out in the streets, but they're often in, like, the subways. They come into the subways late at night when the subways start to close up. Um, but they're typically, I don't know, I'll say they're not bothersome, unlike homeless people in Los Angeles or San Francisco, they're like crazy, like crazy, crazy, and really bug you. Bug me, at least. Uh, ben said when he was in Beppu, who went to all the hells. This is a lot of hells, Ben. How long did it take you to go to all seven? I'm curious. Um, Ryan Watson says, hello. Hello, Ryan. Um, Kirk asked, did you notice the Japanese to be short? Um, I did not notice the Japanese to be short, but they noticed me to be tall. That is often one of the things when I go in an elevator, you know, they'll often look at me and be like, whoa, that's big. Um, Ryan asks if I've ever been to a Waji. I have never been to a Waji, Ryan. Should I go to a Waji? What's in a Waji? Uh, Kirk asks if I saw a lot of locals pl playing Pokemon. Do you mean Pokemon on a cell phone or do you mean Pokemon the card game? When I was in Osaka's Denden Den Town, which is kind of their equivalent of Akihabara, um, like the otaku nerdy part of Osaka, there was a um, card shop uh, that people were playing the trading card game, Pokemon, uh, so I did see that. Uh, Jimmy says, uh, your driving confidence was impressive going up that icy mountain. Yes, uh, Topher was, uh, he was, he was, he was shaking a little bit, uh, but uh, oh, the roads were pretty good, and I had my snow tire, so 
it wasn't it wasn't too bad. We made sure also to only drive in the day and not drive at night um, when the roads ice up. Coco asks if I have a Japan driver's license. I do not have a Japan driver's license, but Japan recognizes U.S. driver's licenses with an international driving permit. Uh, and you can go to AAA and pay like $17 and get like an international driving permit. It's valid for a year. <coughs> it makes your license valid in Japan too. Number 13, the 13th difference is check out. And that is check out in, in, the, in the US, in America, much like check in, they're really, hotels are trying to make like a non-event. Uh, you know, so they, they don't want like long lines at check out. So you see a lot of American hotels will have like mobile check out. You can like check out on your cell phone. They'll have like check out on the television. Um, they'll like slide your bill under the door. Um, you have like a box you can drop your key in as like an express checkout. Not so much in Japan. Checkout in Japan, definitely still an event. Um, and, uh, and some of the like, like the onsen hotels we stayed at, they ask us specifically like, what time would you like to check out? Like they really, they want to know what time. I would like to check out at 11. And they'll be like, okay, we'll come by your room at 1045 and take your luggage. I'm gonna take a luggage, oh, that's nice. And they don't expect the tip either. Uh, and then 11, you go to the front desk, they'll look up some stuff, look up some papers, pull it out. Uh, and often uh, you get like a, like a gift at checkout. Uh, like, oh, here's some candy. The Marriott, it was like some pineapple candy. One of the other hotels in Kyushu, it was something else, it was like some cookies or something like that. Uh, and so they do like their checkout process. Often give you the bill in like an envelope. Sometimes they'll give you like postcards to remember your stay, uh, but they wanna say thank you. And then a lot of hotels, if you're leaving, and then they didn't do, they didn't do this at the Marriott or like the really big business hotels, but any of like the smaller, more boutique hotels, uh, like if you're driving, um, and there's like a place more in the country, when you drive away, they will stand there and they will stand there until you leave. Like you get in your car and they will stand and they will look at you like respectfully watching you until you leave. Because when you leave, then they want to bow and they want to wave. And if you go like around a corner, like if there's a corner, they're gonna walk out to that corner to wave around the corner to make sure that you know that they're waving the whole time. I mean, it's a, it's a, like an impressive checkout departure process. Um, Kirk, when he asked about Pokemon, asked about the cell phone game. I didn't see anybody playing it on the cell phone. Um, Yippee says, there you are, now I'm late. Hello, welcome, Yippee. I'll probably be going for another five or 10 more minutes, so a little bit, uh, a little bit going still. Um, Ryan Watson says, Awajishima, the island between uh, Kashi, Kaikyo Bridge, and Shikoku, Onion Island. I did not make it there. Are there a lot of onions there, Ryan? What's there to see? Um, Kirk asks, did you go to McDonald's while you were there? I walked into a McDonald's because I was curious to see what they had. The McDonald's in Osaka was actually really quite busy, like packed, super busy, lined to the door. Every seat was taken. It was impressive. I almost, I almost broke down and ate at McDonald's because after a week I was missing burgers. But then I, I decided to go to Family Mart instead and get some convenience store food. Because I figure when I'm in Japan, I should eat Japanese food and I shouldn't eat McDonald's. But I believe McDonald's in Japan is actually pretty good. Um, I find it often better than the States. Uh, Kirk asked, did you use cash or credit more often? Japan is very much a cash-based society. Um, so I used cash more often. Though I do like to use credit because I like my credit card points. Because a lot of you may have watched my video on the um, top 10 best credit cards for 2018. So it's one of the ways I travel so much is via credit card points. Uh, so whenever I could use my credit card, I could. But it's maybe 50-50 maybe credit cards versus um, cash. Uh, Yippee says, after my res verifying my reservation at the front desk, I had an ATM type check-in prepaid, then I got coupons for breakfast. Yeah, absolutely, coupons. Coco asks if I speak Japanese. Uh, I speak, I speak Japanglish. Uh, actually, there's this super funny music video about Japanglish, uh, that there's all these, like, Japanese words that they've taken from English, uh, like beer is biru, bus is basu, milk is miru. Uh, so I can speak a lot of those words, like hamburger, because they're really easy. Gyoza, uh, biru, kudasai, I want a beer. I don't really drink beer all that much, but mizu, kudasai, I want some ice water. Uh, so I have my like limited phrases, but not a lot. 
SoCal Seth uh, says very much about ceremony and presentation in Japan. You are absolutely right. They do like ceremony. They do like presentation. Um, one of my videos uh, that's coming out of the Osaka trip is um, 10 things to know before you go to Japan. And in that video, I talk about how just like when you hand something to somebody, you will hand it with two hands. And when you collect it from them, you will collect it back with two hands. And like if somebody hands you a business card, you will receive that business card and you will look at it like it is the most amazing thing ever. You know, and you'll study it because if you don't and you just take it like a lot of Americans do, take it, put it away, put it in your wallet. I mean, they'll be, they'll be like really offended. Um, Kirk says, can, can you show us your Japan vacation haul? You mean all the stuff that was in that bag? A lot of that was uh, from OC Girl. I got a lot of um, fake food, I got like a fake tangerine, a fake beer glass, uh, like a sushi thing. Um, so, uh, some of the things that I think I've shown you pictures of. Uh, Ken, Kevin David says, can you tell me about the RF cards on trains? Yeah, they're, um, so they're called like, uh, it's like Suica card or ICOC. There's a whole bunch of different cards in different regions, but I mean, you basically load them up with money. You can load them up at the train station and then you just tap in and you tap out. I mean, they're pretty easy to use. Um, I'm not sure much more there is to say about it. And Coco says, enjoying your stream. Very knowledgeable. Thanks, Coco. I appreciate it. All right. So let's go on to the last one. This is number 14. <clears throat> this will probably be a 10 minute one because I have about, uh, about a page of notes on this, but I'm going to try to go quick because I usually try to keep these things roughly to an hour. Um, so onsen hotels, traditional Japanese hotels. So we'll talk about these. This is a whole different class of hotels in Japan. And uh, onsen hotels, again, onsen is the Japanese word for hot spring. Onsen hotels, they're typically in the countryside. They're typically not in the big cities. Tokyo doesn't have a lot of onsen hotels. Uh, there's a couple, but not a lot. Um, because they're typically in the countryside or in the mountains, uh, they're often designed for city dwellers to retreat for the weekend to get away. They're really designed for like one or two night stays, not for much longer. Um, if you are looking for kind of a big city that a lot of tourists go to to try traditional Japanese in, um, Kyoto has some. Uh, another place that's kind of close to Tokyo is Hakone, which is in like the Mount Fuji region. Um, Traditional onsen hotels are often small and family run. Uh, so in this trip to Kyushu, the three hotels we stayed at that are the traditional Japanese hotels, uh, each one didn't have more than 20 rooms. It was like 16, 18, 20 rooms. Um, so small, small hotels. Uh, and at an onsen hotel, um, talking about check-in and arrival, usually check-in at the desk is shorter, and less formal. They might not even have you come to a desk. They may have you sit at a table where they serve you tea, or they may bring you to your room where they tell you about the hotel in your room, not so much at the front desk. You'll often be given a kind of like room attendant uh, that might be a girl in a kimono, might be a guy in a suit, usually a girl in a kimono, that will take you to your room and explain everything to you there. Um, when you're in your room, if they didn't give you tea out front, they'll give you tea in your room. When you get to your room at a traditional Japanese hotel, it'll be, it'll be different. It'll be different than a Western room. It'll be very minimalistic. And by very minimalistic, I mean um, it'll be like tatami mats on the floor, no carpet. Uh, and you won't wear shoes. You'll either have taken your shoes off at the front of the hotel when they've given you slippers or you take them off at the room. But either way, you'll take off your shoes before you come into the room. Um, there will often be a table in the room called a zataku instead of a Western table. It'll have really short legs and to sit at the table, you sit on the floor. Uh, typically Japanese hotel rooms, traditional ones, they don't have doors that like uh, on hinges. They have soji screens made from rice paper that slide instead of swing. Um, they'll have the traditional pajamas, the yukata. You will wear the yukata when you're at a traditional Japanese hotel. Like when you go to dinner, they expect you to put on the yukata and wear that around the hotel. Uh, the bedding will not be a big many with a mattress. It'll be futons. But when you get to the room, the bedding won't be there. It'll just be the table. And then when you've arranged for dinner, and they're going to ask you what time you want dinner or what time you're going to leave to dinner if you're not eating the hotel. And that's the time that the, as I call them, the room ninjas are going to come into your room and replace the table with futons. And the bedding will be there when you come back from dinner. Um, 
In colder months, that table that I talked about may have an embedded heater in it, like a blanket on it to keep your legs warm. Uh, also, many traditional, uh, these Japanese style hotels, because they have hot springs, may often not have their own shower or bath in the room. So they may have like a toilet and sink, but then the shower and the bath will be like a public shower or bath that you have to use in the public area if you want to shower or bathe. Uh, and then onsen, which is the hot spring, uh, and in the interest of time for this video, I'm not going to talk about the whole culture of going into the onsen, but you know, separate men's, women's, no clothes, take a shower before. I really love onsens in Japan. I was kind of weirded out by them the first time. Really like them. Uh, this one hotel we stayed at, Yama Mizuki, outdoor onsen in the snow next to this river and this hot water. You know, the snow comes down and evaporates before it gets to it. Truly amazing. Want to know more about onsens? Watch my video on how to use an onsen in Japan. Uh, and then the other big part about onsen hotels is they'll often have, if you book dinner, this multi-course kaiseki dinner that has like, they like a menu and they'll show you there's like 14 courses. This is the courses you're on. Uh, that's where we had like puffer fish and the fish on a stick and really elaborate kind of stuff. It, it's really part of the experience. So if you are going to a traditional Japanese style hotel, I suggest you do book the dinner because um, again, you won't get the full experience if you don't book the dinner. All right, that's number 14. I'll go to some questions and then we'll wrap it up. Um, Jose asks, if you visit Japan again, what's one of your priority destinations? Huh. Well, um, I mean, we always love Tokyo. I always love Tokyo. So Tokyo is always a priority destination. <clears throat> I think if we go back again, we actually want to go to Tokyo Disneyland again, because uh, that was kind of a fun place. And uh, we've only been there, well, we've been to Tokyo Disneyland once, Tokyo Disney Sea another time, but it's been there, been a while since we've been back to Disneyland, so that's, that's probably one on our list. Kevin David said that's awesome. Uh, Ryan Watson says, went to Kinosaki Onsen for New Year. Ryan, that's cool. How did you enjoy the onsen? Did it have like a big outdoor onsen, or was it just inside? Um... SoCal Seth asks if anyone knows if that one indoor beach is still open in Japan. I do not know, Seth. I'm sorry. Um, Kevin David says, is Japan really that advanced technologically? I think Japan does have a lot of technologically advanced things, like ramen restaurants that you order from a vending machine. But in a lot of ways, Japan is really not technologically advanced. Like, they like paperwork. They like stamps. They like process. Um, so it's kind of, it's, it's a really interesting dichotomy of advanced things and then traditional things. Mm, Kirk asked, do you prefer flying the red eye or during the day? Uh, I prefer to fly during the day because I don't sleep very well on planes. Um, like going to Asia or things like that, my preference is flights that like arrive there at nighttime so that I can get into Japan at say 5 p.m. and then get to the hotel 7 or 8 and just like go to sleep. Tanner Wilson says, if you're there during soccer season, which I believe begins in March, see a J-League soccer game. Uh, the games are off the hook amazing to see. That sounds cool. I've never been to see a soccer game. I have been to see the Yokohama All-Stars baseball game, and uh, I don't even like baseball, but it was a really interesting game, uh, the way the audience cheered and chanted, um, and the... The girls that were vending beer, they had these like kegs almost on their back as they walk around the stadium and serve beer again. I don't drink beer, but it's just like a sight to see uh, to go to that. Um, Kirk asks if I've eaten the new Costco chili. Um, you know, I've seen the chili. I'm not a huge chili fan, so I've not eaten the Costco chili. I really like the Costco hot dogs and I like Costco pizza. I have not been back to have the Costco burger. Um, for those who didn't know, Costco sells a hamburger that they're piloting at some of their locations. If you're curious about it, I have a video on the Costco burger versus In-N-Out burger. Uh, it was like five, six dollars. I, I didn't think the value was good enough for it, and I, I love, I love In-N-Out, so that's often where I go. Uh, so Gal says, says, at least futons are honest. They have F-U right in the name. They, they do, but you know, I actually... I, when I've been at the Onsen Hotel sleeping on the futons, at least at the nice ones, I actually find them pretty comfortable and, and sleep pretty well. Um, Zegan123 says, hello from Canada. Keep up the good work. Hello, Zegan123. Thanks for joining in. Uh, Ryan says that Kinosaki is an onsen town. Many onsen, you stay at one hotel and they loan you a kimono and you onsen troll. Interesting. 
Uh, okay. And were those, but again, were those onsens like inside or were they outside? I really like outdoor onsens. Um, I don't, I don't so much like indoor onsens. I find them like hot and stuffy and humid. Uh, so I like to be outside. Um, Kevin David says, thanks for your replies. You're awesome. Keep it up. Kevin, I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the questions. Jose says, great live video. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Looking forward to more awesome content. Jose, appreciate the kind words. Thank you for joining. Ryan Watson says, I mean, Yukata. That's the that's the robe. Uh, and Yippie says, they have a Costco in Japan. I guess that's a statement. I, I don't know. I have not been to Costco in Japan. I do like to visit Costco's in different countries because I find it interesting. Coco says, Japan, paper money always looks brand new. Are you expected to keep them in pristine condition? Uh, I don't. I don't think you have to keep them in pristine condition. I mean, you know, I don't know. I know a lot of like money in some countries looks all wadded up and things like that. Yeah, they probably treat their money a little bit better, but they'll probably take it because it's always good. Uh, David M says, thanks for the credit card video. I'm glad you enjoyed that, David. I hope you get some miles and points that you can go on vacation with later. Uh, and Ryan says, all of the onsen hotels have inside and outside baths. Cool. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to check out that onsen town maybe for another visit. Uh, all right. Well, that's, uh, that's going to wrap up the video. Um, if you want to tune into my next live stream, uh, it's going to be next Monday, January 29th, 8 p.m. LA time. So just a week from today, I'll be talking about downtown Los Angeles and about how downtown Los Angeles has been crappy for a long time, but I think it's going to be one of the next up and coming tourist destinations. I got a tip from, uh, from a subscriber it says Chris you should do a video about this and so that's what I'm gonna do uh, if you've got other ideas for live streams to do let me know and I'll do it I've got another one coming up that I'll do about how to travel to Japan for cheap uh, so those are a couple ones I have on the list but next week it's gonna be all about downtown Los Angeles 8 p.m. LA time January 29th thank you everybody for tuning in and have a great week uh, all right. And yes, and SoCal Seth says travel pet peeves. I've not forgot that one. It is on my list, too. I've been thinking about it. I've actually started writing some notes from it. Uh, so that'll come out in uh, hopefully the next month. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.